Well, I introduced my last video by saying, what the... F <laughs> and you know what? I really should have saved that for today's story, because wow, this one is absolutely insane. I really have no way of describing what's going on here. You're just going to have to listen to it, make up your own minds. It's Lovecraftian, it's Frankensteinian, it's got all kinds of paranormal weird body horror stuff going on. <laughs> That's about the best I can do in describing this one. So, my dear friends, I'm glad you're here. You know what time it is. It's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink and listen. Dr. Amani Singh awoke without the usual terror that accompanied him with the arrival of morning. Nightmares had beleaguered him for several weeks, but he awoke this morning without the usual sense of impending doom. He turned to see the words, Etimono leshe doma dare, or, The face of God falls upon you, written in blood along the wall. These words written in blood provided no motivation. He took a deep breath and relaxed a little deeper into his comfortable bed. The sound of a tea kettle signaled imminent danger. He went to the dining room, where plates and silverware were set along the table. He heard shuffling in the other room. The whistling of the kettle continued, as he peered through the doorway leading to his kitchen. He saw the dead girl, wearing a summer dress that still held the dirt scars from when he found her. Her flesh looked more like eroded plastic after decomposing for several weeks between being dead and post-reanimation. She removed the kettle and it calmed in no time. She filled two cups with warm water and settled them onto separate plates. She brought them up with such care as she turned towards the doorway. When she realized Dr. Singh was there, she fell back in surprise and almost let the plates fall to the ground. Oh, Doctor, you startled me. Her face held together well, despite the several weeks she'd been dead. The rot at the point where her forehead met her full, lustrous hair was the only point where he saw any cracks. A layer of skull poked out from the busted sinew. He'd stitched her together several times, but that point never stayed. Persephone, why are you here? Dr. Singh asked. We've been over this, and over this again and again. But Doctor, I have a good reason this time, I promise. Persephone always had a reason to see the Doctor. Her cheerful smile was hard to deny. The doctor was always in the business of letting her off with a kind warning. What might that be? He asked. I saw the face of God today. You know not to joke about that, the doctor warned. If you're not being serious, I'll find a way to ensure you never find me again. Oh, doctor, don't say that. I would never lie about something so important. Would you be willing to prove it? Of course. Dr. Amani Singh lived in a small home. He lived a life of austerity well within his means. He had no hopes of advancing any further, upgrading his house to anything more than a place to rest until he died. Everything looked the same, except for the metal door that stood along the wall between the dining room and parlour. The door held three locks, one of which required a key. He told the dead girl to close her eyes and remove the key from a compartment in his shoe. The lock turned. Before he could open it, Persephone touched his hand. What is it? The doctor asked. Why would he be down there? What do you mean? Where else would he be? No, I mean... He's the most powerful being in the universe, correct? Yes, of course. So? So why hasn't he killed you? Why would he let you live after you made him your prisoner? 
Why doesn't he go somewhere else? Do you think you can keep him forever? I don't have answers for any of those questions, Dr. Singh said. I've thought about them, but I'm starting to believe there might not be an answer. Sometimes things happen and you just have to consider yourself lucky for how they happened. Why would he let me do this? He enjoys feeding me bits of wisdom, knowing I want more. He knows I couldn't stop searching, even if everything failed and I was left with nothing. It's a struggle, a quest, for which I have come too far. I can't turn back. He knows that, and he loves to serve as my tormentor. Do you think it's a trap? She asked. I do. Dr. Singh opened the door. It pulled into the wall. He found the light along the wall, which illuminated a wooden stairway. Dr. Singh walked halfway down the stairs, when he turned and said, Are you coming? Persephone thought about it for a moment, but took that first step into the basement. She turned and pulled the door closed. Dr. Singh continued down the stairs, walking out of sight. More lights went on in the basement. As she made her way around the corner, she saw several work lights hanging from yellow hooks nailed along the ceiling. Dr. Singh had three separate tables covered in papers. One of the tables held a computer he never used. He preferred writing everything down. Her eyes couldn't move from the massive obstruction. A metal sphere projected from the wall. Several wires of various colors hung around the sphere and made a mess as they piled around on it. On the other side was a small glass panel for viewing inside the machine. Persephone thought about it for a moment and couldn't resist. She moved closer to the glass, taking special care not to let the creature see her. She looked in and saw nothing, except an impenetrable black. It's so dark in there. Why would you do that to him? His eyes concerned me, the doctor replied. I could feel them on me at all times. I still do. At least now, I can act like he's asleep. He never sleeps, the girl replied. He never sleeps and he never dies, Amani said. I've done this a million times. He doesn't seem bothered by it every time he dies. At least not as much as me. Every time that I kill him, I feel a bit of myself die in the process. He's taking you then, the girl warned. How many more times until he reaches that delicate center? How long until he consumes you? I don't know, Dr. Singh replied. It's as inevitable as death itself. Death for him? is not inevitable, Doctor. Hmm, we'll see. The Doctor turned on the machine. The engine needed a moment to wake up, as it hummed back to life. Another lever stood on the right side of the machine. He pulled it, and a light flashed from the inside. The revolving arms and legs within the sphere were awake. They weren't moving, but the machine was on. The engine hum grew louder, until an incessant clicking noise alerted them to a red bulb that flashed throughout the room. Everything went red as they neared that final stage. He took a deep breath and pushed a blue button. The lights turned on inside the machine. The creature stared as if its eyes had never left him. It maintained the same emotionless smirk as it always had. You should have left him where you found him, Persephone said. His awakening was foretold, you know. You think you've found the scientific discovery of the ages, but that's what he wants you to believe. What does that mean, Persephone? he asked. I know he's leading me to a trap. I know that this won't have a good ending. But what other choice do I have? If this can benefit the human race, 
What choice do I have? Dr. Singh made a point to look into the eyes of the monster, as he waited to let his machine perform one last task. Several restraints lined the walls inside the machine. Two separate metal poles held the creature's ankles, while two more held his knees. Two poles held his hips, torso and neck, while a cranial vice held his skull. Metal poles and wiring restrained every inch of the creature. The machine itself was akin to some kind of human meat slicer. It cut through each of these restrained parts as it made its way to his throat. The machine moved to cut its body to ribbon. Every time it cut, the body of the creature fused and the wounds disappeared. One final incision severed the neck from the head. The split remained for a second before the creature's flesh pulled back together. Dr. Singh took a moment to consider the look in the creature's eyes before he pulled the final lever. The supports pulled away from the wall for only a few inches. It rotated for a moment, moving the creature around. Another metal support moved within the sphere. The difference was the thin metal wire that dangled from the top. It revolved a few times until the wires cut through the creature's throat. The creature's eyes went wide as blood pooled around the wound and healed right away. The creature kept his eyes on the doctor. The wires cut through its ankles and knees, hips, torso, wrists, shoulders and elbows, until it cut through his throat. A flicker of light went off with every cut. The light flashed over and over from several bulbs lining the inside of the machine. Anger became all that the doctor could see in the creature's eyes. The bursts of light illuminated the unremitting rage clenching down on the monster. It bubbled against its cold, dead skin until the light flashed once more and went out. The lights in the basement went out. The doctor called to Persephone, but she didn't respond. Dr. Singh crept over to the closest desk, trying not to make a sound, until he had the flashlight he kept in the lowest compartment. He turned it on and waved it around, until he found her. Persephone's eyes were empty. The sockets clung to worms squirming to escape. They poured out of her open mouth and through her nose. Beetles broke through her flesh, tearing the seams that the doctor had worked hard to secure. As she fell apart. She collapsed to the ground and the parasites feasted on her remains. Red lights flashed as the machine turned back on. Tied within the machine, he saw Persephone. She cried and fought to break free. Dr. Singh tried to open the machine, but the mechanisms couldn't disengage until it stopped. He moved to the emergency override panel. It took some time, but he put the code into the system and everything shut down. The room went dark, until the light inside the machine flickered. It flickered over and over. Persephone spun around with her mouth hanging wide as she screamed in a noiseless terror. The first cut of the machine went through her ankles. The next went through her hips. The next followed up her torso. It cut her to pieces as her body parts dangled from the restraints. A vomit of worms and insects poured down her chest and splattered against the glass. It tore her to pieces until the lights went out. Dr. Singh pushed closer to the glass. It flashed back on and Persephone was gone. The chair sat empty. The red light flickered over and over in the basement. He felt the eyes watching him and brought the flashlight over to see. There were hundreds of bodies. They didn't move. 
They stood there with empty eye sockets dripping with pus and worms. They made the same horrible sound as the worms slid out of their bodies and littered the basement floor. Persephone, I know you're there. Tell me where you are. Dr. Singh searched as he heard the distant cries of the dead girl. They echoed within the walls, but whenever he got too close, they dissipated into silence. Persephone, please, don't be mad. You do this every time, Persephone said. You use me as bait. I can't do it anymore. I'd rather be dead. Don't say that, the doctor asked. But please, say something. Is he with you? He's somewhere in here, Persephone said. But I can't see him. The clouds are much thicker this time. Hmm, we'll have to remember that. I wonder if clouds come in on that side like it happens over here with the tide. You didn't notice many when we did this last night. It's not the same this time. Dr. Singh walked into his parlor. The words, Vincieno, Vincieno, or Vengeance, Vengeance, dripped in blood down the wall. Doctor, he's here, Persephone yelled. What do I do? Remain calm. Remember to follow my voice. Doctor, he's levitating again. He's coming. Dr. Singh closed all the doors around his dining room. He lowered the curtains and an impenetrable black filled the room. He hit the second switch and the light on the ceiling illuminated the room in a purple beam. Markings in white lined the walls, ceiling and floor. Persephone called out, her voice becoming fainter. Dr. Singh moved around the room, getting things into place, when he realized two people were sitting at the table. He turned to see a man wearing a tux and a woman wearing a wedding dress. They turned to him without concern, and he saw the red lines marking each of their throats. Blood decorated the bride's dress. Doctor, where are you? Persephone cried. He's right here. I can't run anymore. Where are you? I don't know. Come on, Persephone. You need to focus. Find the sign and I'll find you. He's so close. Just do it. Persephone went quiet. The man in the tux stood up at the table. Both people kept their eyes unblinking as they watched Dr. Singh's every move. The woman started to cry. The dining room shifted. Three bodies lay with their heads folded between the floor and wall. Their chins stuck into their collars. Two young girls lay with massive wounds in their chests. Bones poked out of their ribcages, along with busted organs and blood. The other woman was the bride, except instead of the wedding dress, she wore a black nightgown. Blood covered most of the gown, leaking from a wound in her neck. The images flashed between Dr. Singh's dining room and this other world. The bride twisted in her chair, wrapping her hair into complicated knots around her fingers. She tugged once and raised her eyes to the ceiling. The light folded in her eyes, collapsing into an impossible black as she screamed. What was that? Persephone asked. Find the sign. Dr. Singh kept his back against the wall as the groom walked away from the table. The two girls appeared in white dresses. They blocked both doors and sang a nursery rhyme. Something about little lambs all alone. The symbols projected a few inches from the walls and danced in place. It's the lightning bolt, Persephone began. Two lightning bolts with a circle around them. Dr. Singh looked around for the symbol as the bride picked up the butter knife. She stood up and tossed the chair aside. The table and chairs levitated a few feet off the floor. The lightning bolt stood on the other side of the room. The girls sat with their legs folded, rocking in place, as their eyes shifted to a horrible white with hundreds of red cracks. 
One of the girls leapt and bit into his leg. He fell over and the other girl grabbed his arms. They held him down as the mother came closer. The groom leapt with joy, clapping his hands as he looked to all the signs. The sign spun in place. The groom put his hand through a sign of a tree on fire. The symbol blazed in a fiery crimson before collapsing to dust. A vortex appeared and spit grey clouds into the room until Persephone's head pushed through and clogged the rift. Doctor, she cried out, he's somewhere behind me. The sign, I can't reach it, Dr. Singh yelled. The bride hissed at Persephone before leaping over Dr. Singh's body. She came down with the butter knife and stabbed him in the chest. The knife didn't cut far, but made a slight incision a few inches beneath his collarbone. Dr. Singh shot up from the pain and pushed everyone away. The groom fell back against the wall. His hands reached out, swirling to touch every symbol, as he laughed and danced. He leapt up, grabbing Persephone's cheeks before planting a kiss on her lips. Dr. Singh moved as fast as he could to the symbol of the lightning bolts wrapped in a circle. He put his fist through the wall, the symbol radiated a putrid green, spinning faster and faster as it floated toward the center of the room. The bride and groom sat back. The bride pouted as the symbol sucked her in, dragging her along the ground by her backside as she waved goodbye. The groom was much less agreeable. He held onto Dr. Singh's china cabinet and pulled it over. The suction became too much and the groom lifted by his feet as he held onto the cabinet. Please, the groom pleaded. Dr. Singh had a moment of pity before the groom opened his mouth with a wide smile. His teeth were pristine white with worms dancing around his gums. He let go and the symbol took him away. The table and chairs fell to the floor. Persephone remained locked in the rift. Dr. Singh climbed on top of his table and pulled on her shoulders. She budged enough that he could wrap his arms around her. He dug deeper into the rift and took her hands. He had her almost the way out when he felt a pair of cold hands wrap around his knuckles. Doctor, he's right behind me, Persephone cried. In a panic, he gave a swift pull and sent Persephone flying across the room. Her body held together well for a dead girl. The rift closed behind them. Dr. Singh expected to see a sinister watchman on the other side. Are you all right? He asked. I guess so. I'm sorry, but I have to ask. Did you see it? Yes, but the thing is... What? What is it? The face of God. It's the creature. His is the face of God. They returned to the basement. Persephone took a seat at the bottom step while Dr. Singh made his way to the machine. He looked inside. The light was out. When he flicked the switch, it didn't turn on. He's in there, Doctor, but there's something I can't tell you. No secrets. Dr. Singh warned. Please, just tell me. Well, I've always had a crush on you and... Persephone considered. Well, if you ever wanted something so bad, you would do anything to get it. What are you saying? Dr. Singh asked. Well, you see, Doctor, I wanted to be with you, so I had to... I had to make a deal. What kind of deal? The machine turned on by itself. The light inside flashed and revealed an empty seat. The lights inside flashed one after the other. Dr. Singh's computer turned on out of nowhere. It turned on right away, and several files popped up and made a mess over the screen. It came to a file labeled pictures and showed several images. 
hundreds of pictures of shadowy forms surrounding the doctor during his studies. Every image showed fewer and fewer of the forms. He noticed the date. The further back in time the images went, the fewer the bodies. More and more bodies appeared over time. More and more ghosts broke through the gateway and entered his home. Persephone, where is he? Doctor, I love you so much. The lights went out. Darkness filled the room. Dr. Singh yelled for Persephone as the red light flickered and illuminated countless forms. More of the forms appeared with every flicker reaching closer and closer. Dr. Singh backed away as far as he could, until he leaned against one of his tables. The shadows attacked. He fought, and they took him down. The machine opened, and the forms pushed him inside. They restrained him. Dr. Singh screamed for Persephone one last time, before the door closed. Red lights continued to flash from the outside, while the inside of the machine lit up. He heard knocking against the glass and saw the creature. It never blinked as the machine came to life. The restraints shook, pulling him upright by a few inches, before leaving his face in front of the glass. Persephone kissed the glass, leaving a faint outline of her lips as she watched the machine pull him back. His restraints pulled him upright. The rig set behind him whirred into motion, dragging the metal wiring up to his neck. Several pieces from the restraints broke from the rig and moved beyond the control of the machine. They moved to sever his hands from his body, as well as the restraints that held him in place. Dr. Singh screamed, as it cut pieces of flesh from his legs, ripping through his clothing to trim bits of flesh from his thigh. It cut through his right leg, leaving it dangling from its harness. The metal wire spun through the air and wrapped around his forehead below his left ear and above his right. The wire tightened around him until he thought the pressure would make his brain explode. It cut right through. Blood poured down his face and covered his mouth. He couldn't process thoughts anymore, but his eyes remained rigid with terror. The wire cut through his cheek as it made its way to his other arm. It cut through his arm. Both arms severed, leaving him dangling by his throat within the machine. The wire came up one last time. It floated in front of his face. Dr. Singh whimpered as it tied around his throat. It tightened, cutting into the soft flesh around his neck. He lost his breath, and his eyes bulged from his skull. He couldn't collapse as the wire tightened more and more, cutting into him deeper until it cut right through. His head fell from his shoulders and bounced against the side of the machine, rattling by his feet. It took a moment, but the machine shut down and opened. Persephone picked up the pieces of Dr. Singh, taking care as she wrapped them up. She brought them to his room and laid them across the bed. When she had every last piece, she lay alongside them. She kissed Dr. Singh's shattered face and wrapped her arms around him. The parts of him folded under her, but she held them together. She heard a knock. She went into the hall. The noise became a thunderous boom that echoed throughout the hallway. Persephone ran to the kitchen. She set the kettle on high and waited to hear it whistle. Before it could, she turned and noticed the doctor sitting in the doorway. The sight of him startled her. He walked with caution as the individual parts that now represented his body buoyed in place. He took a seat in a chair by the table. By some miracle, the pieces held together. Persephone, 
He choked on blood and worms. Why are you here? Oh, Doctor. Persephone watched in horror. You startled me. Persephone, why are you here? Dr. Singh asked. We've been over this and over this again and again. The pieces of him held together, but he worked to push his hips and stomach into alignment. It helped him remain upright, and he sat with a straight spine, angling upward around his neck. But Doctor, I have good reason this time, I promise. Persephone recited from memory their conversation. It was one they'd repeated several times. What might that be? he asked. The top of his skull slid a little too much, but Dr. Singh didn't seem to notice. I saw the face of God today, Persephone said, as she walked to the table. She let her hand rest on the imperfect line that cut his skull in half. She pushed it into place. He did the same for the broken seam between her forehead and hairline. Dr. Singh let his finger touch the bit of skull that was always showing on her perfect face. He couldn't help but smile. Funny, I think I just saw it, right before my eyes. Persephone pushed away, as her smile revealed fangs. She couldn't blush, as she'd been dead for far too long. Oh, Doctor, I'd be glad to prove it to you, if you'd let me. I think I just about have all the proof I need. Persephone set a glass for him along with a plate. They drank their tea and enjoyed the morning. Dr. Singh didn't bother with the machine. He never bothered with it again. They remained in the house for the remainder of their afterlives, until the property was condemned. People came to the house all the time, but nobody stayed for long. Several issues deterred potential buyers, like the star-crossed lovers with stitches, dangling flesh and broken frames, who, without fail, always stayed for longer than breakfast. Hey there. Thank you so much for taking the time to drop by and listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me. I put a lot of time and effort into making these videos, so it's nice to know that there's someone out there listening. Do me a little favor, would you? Click that like button, leave a comment, and if you really feel like it, why not subscribe too? Okay, happy tales everyone. See you soon.